So today I wanna to do a comparison between a few camera sling bags, or at least sling bags that can be used to carry cameras. You know, as the saying goes, the best camera is the one that you have on you. And I kinda of really want the camera that I have on me to be something other than a cell phone. Otherwise, like why am I spending money on all of these mirrorless cameras if I'm not gonna use them? So the reason that I'm doing this, and as you can tell by this uh, table here, is that in the pursuit of the perfect mirrorless camera sling bag, I have acquired way, way too many sling bags. And putting this video together, my hope was that it would make me sort of analyze each bag, how it works with the cameras I wanna carry, help me figure out which bags I wanted to get rid of and sell, which bags do I wanna keep. I've added time code links to the description for each bag that I'm gonna talk about. You can find those down in the description along with some affiliate links to each of the, the products. Also, you know, this channel recently passed a thousand subscribers and I just kinda of wanna take a second to say thank you to everybody who subscribed. It's really exciting that people want to watch, you know, these silly little videos that I put together. So thank you. Let's get on to the actual bags. You know, today we're going to be looking at the Wandered D1 Fanny Pack. Um, we're going to be looking at the Bellroy Sling. This is a seven liter sling by Bellroy. Then we're going to be looking at the Bellroy four liter mini sling or sling mini or something like that. Next, we're going to be looking at the in-case camera side bag and their sort of cheap filling uh, Woolenex fabric. Then we're gonna be looking at the Peak Design 3 liter uh, everyday sling. And before we get to that, let's take a look at uh, one that I've mentioned on this channel before. This is the Air City Sling, and it's probably the one that's gotten the most use. It's got really high quality materials I talked about before with that uh, 1680D Cordura nylon, kind of gives it some padding without actually having padding. It's got these big waterproof YKK zippers, and you know, even though it's only 2.4 liters, which just makes it the smallest bag we're gonna look at today by volume, it seems to fit gear more easily than like the four liter Bellroy Sling Mini or the 2.5 liter Wandered D1. And since the zips are mostly in a straight line, they really do open and close easily without you know a lot of fiddling. And you know, when you wear it, because the straps sort of come off the front it, and it kind of pulls it to your body, it makes it seem like it isn't sticking out that far. So when you wear it, it kind of looks and feels good, uh, even when it's fully packed out. Speaking of packed out, I've currently got it packed out with sort of my A6600 vlogging setup. You can see that it easily fits the Sony ECM B1M microphone, uh, the A6600 itself with the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 lens. And then it's also got room for like a spare battery in the pockets and a ND filter. So all of that fits, you know, without any trouble. It's also has plenty of room for something like my M6 Mark II, which is kind of my go-to stills camera that I've talked about on this channel with the Canon um, 32 millimeter 1.4. And behind that, we'll add a little piece of foam just to make sure these things don't bump together. There's also plenty of room to add the EFM version of the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. So here we've got a nice like compact two lens setup. And you know, when it's on your body, even when it's fully packed out like this, I've got still that Sigma 16 millimeter and the Canon M6 Mark II. It's really easy to open up, you know, grab a picture or two, put back in and then zip back up. You know, in, in fact, the only thing that I don't love about this is how big the straps are. Again, I kind of think it's fine when it's on, it feels comfortable and doesn't look out of place. But when you take it off and you set it down on a table, it has just like this huge, like wide strap. It just seems like, you know, you've set a strap on the table that happens to have a tiny little pack attached to it. It's got this big plastic buckle that like feels kind of cheap. I just think if they had done something a little bit better, a little bit nicer, maybe a magnetic quick release on the strap, maybe thin the strap out a little bit, this would be like the greatest sling bag of all time. And you know, the only other negative thing that I have to say about this is that it doesn't fit my A7 III full frame with the 24 millimeter GM. Now, you know, most of the time when I'm taking stills, I'm bringing my M6 with me, done a lot of videos about that, but I've really fallen in love with the Sony 24 millimeter GM. I originally bought it to shoot these videos because I like the 24 millimeter angle of view for YouTube stuff, but the pictures that I get out of it just have so much character and like something about that perspective of the wide angle view with a shallow 1.4 full frame depth of field. I just get so many keepers with this combo that I find that I kind of want to bring it with me more and more. Um, but as you can see, when you try to put it inside the Air City Sling, it's just a little bit too tall. And I think the uh, viewfinder on top doesn't allow the zipper to close. All right, so what sling bag has a skinnier strap, fits the Sony 24 millimeter GM attached to the A7 III? Well, that brings us to the Bellroy seven liter sling bag. Um, you can see that this has plenty of space 
in order to fit a uh, full frame camera and it fits right in, zips up, no problem. I've even added this sort of like felt liner to give it a little bit of extra protection. I feel like this material isn't quite as thick as the uh, 1680D that's on the Air City Sling. And then, you know, when it's packed out with that full frame camera, there's still plenty of space to like put your phone, keys, wallets. Um, again, with that felt insert, you know, there's plenty of room to put like maybe some Z-type batteries in there. You could definitely fit a good size lens in here. You know, here's that uh, Sony 16 or 10 to 18 millimeter um, F4 lens. That will fit back here without much trouble. You know, now it's starting to get a little bit packed out, but we still have pretty easy access to the a7 III and the 24 millimeter GM attached. But you know, the one thing reviewers have commented on about this bag is that the zips don't give great access to the contents because they kind of they kind of stop short in these corners that you can see. Um, and you have, you know, this overlap it makes it eh, sort of difficult to get a camera in and out. I mean, it's not, it's not too much trouble, you know, not much trouble to get the camera out and get the A7 full frame out, pop it back in, off you go. You know, but it does have this nice thin strap and, you know, it's got this magnetic clasp, which, which works really well for taking the bag on and off without uh, really needing to loosen the strap. You know, even if the clamp is oriented, so you have to wear it across this shoulder, normally I'd wear a sling bag the other way, but it's something I could get used to. Um, and then, yeah, you know, when you set it on the table, like the strap basically isn't even there at all. It's a very nice thin uh, strap. The downside to this bag is that at seven liters, it's pretty big. It, it feels much more substantial to carry than the city sling. I don't know why I don't just carry a backpack. Like if I'm walking around, this is, this is kind of a lot to be carrying. All right, so moving on. What's something that's, you know, a little bit smaller than this, but still has this nice thin strap uh, and also has that magnetic clasp? Well, that brings us to the Wandered D1 Fanny Pack. Um, you know, two and a half liters of volume. It's nice and small. It's made from a combination of like a coated um, 840D ballistic nylon on the front. And then it's got that same 1680D ballistic nylon on the back that you find on the Air City Sling. You know, the coated 840D stuff is okay. It's kind of stiff, it's kind of shiny, but it does have that magnetic clasp. And, you know, the strap's a good size. It's a little bit thicker than the Bellroy, but I think it's still way, way, way thinner than the Air. Let me get the Air for comparison. You know, here you can see side by side the Air strap compared to the Wandered D1. You know, in terms of size, this thing fits my M62 with the 32 millimeter attached, no problem. Um, but it doesn't really fit anything bigger. You know, one thing I was kind of surprised about is it kind of struggles to fit. Here's like an A6600 with the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4. And this, you know, kind of, it's like, it does, you could make it fit. You could certainly squeeze it shut there, but I don't, it's just like, that extra wide grip is kind of making it hard to zip shut there. And then as you can see me struggling with the zipper, that's another thing that I wanted to address. It, it does have these weather resistant uh, YKK zippers, but they're smaller than those on the city sling. And as such, they don't zip that smoothly, especially around these corners. And when the bag is more packed out, I mean, you can see even with that M6 Mark II, which like fits in there really, really well, if you're gonna bring it around the corner, you kind of, I don't know, like if you're just trying to quickly close it, you hit that edge and then it sort of catches and then you have to kind of reset yourself and close it the rest of the way, you know, compared to how quick I can get in and out of the Air City Sling, uh, this one's kind of a disappointment. You know, because most of the mass is sort of out in front of the strap, it's kind of front heavy and droops a bit when you're wearing it in sling mode. Um, and so it sticks out more than something like the, uh, you know, the Bellroy sling or the Air City Sling, um, where the strap is sort of coming from the front and like pulling it to your body. Now. They sort of tried to address that by adding these um, little hooks here. Let me see if I can show you this. And you know, when they're engaged, they sort of pull the front of the bag back into the strap. But you can see they kind of create these weird like dog ears here. It just seems sort of half baked. And then when you put it on, like, yeah, it doesn't droop quite as much, but you know, you still have the problem where the strap is coming from the back of the bag. So it just feels like you have this sort of like boulder on your chest here you know, it sticks out a little bit more. So 
What's something that's small and with a thin strap and a magnetic clasp that sort of pulls the bag close to your body? Now the Bellroy Sling did a good job of all those things except it was probably too big. So what about this new Bellroy Sling Mini? You know, this is one that I'm pretty excited about. I just got it in a couple of days ago and it's an exact copy of their seven liter sling, but you know, it's shrunk down to only four liters. And in terms of size, like this thing is awesome. It, just feels just the right size. You know, it has that same strap mechanism as its bigger brother. So it's kind of pulling it into your chest and it doesn't feel bulky. And just in terms of size, like this thing is so nice. Now again, you know, the zipper mechanism is a little funky. And because of that, again, I don't think you can really make use of the full four liters. I actually don't think you can pack this out as full as the Air City Sling, even though that one's only two and a half liters. Like if we, where'd my M6 go? You know, here we'll try to pack out the M6 Mark II, again with the 32 millimeter, uh, F1.4, we'll kind of shove it all the way in the front so we can get some more space, add the uh, foam there, and then we'll add in this Sigma 16 millimeter. And you can see like, I mean, it's kind of tight to zip and those two things fit no problem in that Air City Sling. The Air City Sling is two and a half liters and this is supposed to be four liters, but because of this funky zipper mechanism, like, you know, even if you did pack this out, like it would be a nightmare trying to get this camera out every single time. You know, that said, now it sounds like I'm actually not gonna like this Bellroy Sling Mini, but I actually really love it, you know, cause it works well for 90% of my use case. You know, I don't mind carrying, I've got like an iPhone wallet. So I keep my phone and wallet in one pocket and my keys in another. Um, you know, it's the camera and the sunglasses that I just don't have a place for. And this actually solved that for me because in terms of camera, most of the time I'm just bringing this M6 Mark II with the EFM 32 millimeter attached. And I can fit that in. And then if I add, you know, my sunglasses case, like right in front of the M6 Mark II, then the whole thing zips shut. And you've got this like, you know, tiny little carry that I think is one of the more stylish options. This is like the perfect bag. I, I really, really, I mean, you can see, it's like very, very small, even smaller than the Air City Sling. And then it doesn't have the problem of being all strap. But what about that A7 III? You know, the, the big Bellroy was just a little bit too bulky. Well, that brings us to the in-case camera side bag. Now the in-case site lists the camera side bag as having a volume of three liters, but that, that can't be right because it's substantially bigger than the Bellroy Mini's four liters. They say that this is made from their Woolenex um, polyester. It's a 300D uh, fabric in some places, 600D weight in other places. It's described as like a lightweight lasting blend of abrasion resistant fabric that repels the elements. Um, and it might be durable, but this bag definitely feels the cheapest of all the ones we're looking at today. And interestingly, you know, this bag was available in an 840D ballistic nylon, but that was discontinued. Although there's a couple of retailers where it seems you can pick it up for a $20 premium. You know, I would pay that extra $20 to get the ballistic nylon version of this. Cause I just, unless you have other of in cases, Woolenex bags and you like the material, I just don't really feel like it just feels kind of cheap compared to the other bags that we've been looking at. In terms of strap size, it does have that same size strap as the Air City Sling, which I thought was a little bit too bag, too big on the Air. But you know, this in case is a bigger bag. So this strap and this big, huge plastic, it even seems like it's the exact same plastic buckle, just feels a lot more balanced. It doesn't seem like you're placing down a big strap with a bag attached. You know, of course, what I really like about this one is because of the shape and size of it is that it fits the A7 III with the 24 millimeter GM attached. You know, you can see how easily that uh, A7 III fits in there, just pops in and out like no problem at all. Plenty of room, the, the bag opens up real wide, uh, which is nice. And you can even fit, in addition to the A7 III, 24 millimeter 1.4, you can fit this 16 to 35 millimeter F4 lens, no problem at all, right in the front, the whole thing zips up really easily. It doesn't seem to have that, even though it kind of goes around a corner, it doesn't have that catchy zipper that the Wandered has. From this angle, like I think it looks nice and you can get, you know, easy access to that A7 III. Take a picture, pop the A7 III back, no problem. Checking it out from the side profile, you can see like how much it sticks out. So, you know, Maybe if there's one thing I have to say other than the materials negative about this bag in terms of design, it's just that like the straps are in the back. It doesn't, it's not pulling the bag into you the way the Bellroy does or some of those other slings. It just kind of feels like it's out on your chest like that. So that sort of brings us to the last bag that we're gonna check out today. And that's the Peak Design Everyday Sling 3 liter edition. Uh, when I bought it, I didn't know how big it was. I, I didn't know if it would fit uh, the a7 III or other full frame cameras, but you can see like, 
it's substantially bigger than the end case. You know, you can put the end case in front of it and see the peak poking around on the sides. Turn it this way, maybe the end case is a little bit thicker. Um, yeah, here's how they look side by side right there. And this is the smallest, you know, peak three liter. I, I, like the six liter, if you're just shooting with a mirrorless system, I don't know why you would ever go with the, the six liter or the 10 liter. Um, because this three liter is kind of already almost too big in my opinion, but let's go ahead and pack it out with the a7 III and we'll put the 16 and 35 in the side right there. Pop in the a7 III. It is a little bit hard to get in and out, a little bit harder than the in case. I mean, it certainly fits no problem, but it has these sort of like gussets or whatever on the sides here. And you can see that getting the camera past those takes a little bit more work than on the in case. But there you go, full frame A7 III, 24 millimeter, 1.4 GM, 16 millimeter, or, or sorry, 16 to 35 millimeter F4, full frame in there as well. And then of course that zips up, no problem at all. Again, these Peak Design zippers moving around that corner, no problem. And I know that these are, these aren't YKK zips, but they're some other zipper that has this aqua guard on it. So this thing is supposed to be pretty water resistant. You know, it kind of has a bit of a tapered shape around its edges. And the result is it seems to conform a little bit more to your body, um, you know, but it does make the bag seem a little bit more substantial. Like when I'm wearing it in front here, it just feels like there's more bag there, but it also doesn't feel because of this tapered bit and the way that these, uh, the straps are coming from here and here, kind of pulling it to my body. It doesn't feel as much like there's a boulder on my chest. What I'd really like is something a little bit smaller than this that fits my a7 III and the 24 millimeter GM and doesn't have room for a second full frame lens because then I can just carry that a7 III 24 millimeter GM combo that I'm so fond of, but not have sort of, you know, just this is a, this is a good size bag. All right, so to wrap things up, you know, where does that leave us? I think I'm gonna sell this larger Bellroy seven liter sling. It's just too big. Um, and if, you know, if I need to carry full frame, then I can go the in case or the peak. Um, I'm also gonna sell the wandered uh, fanny pack just because yeah, I don't like how it hangs off the body a little bit. And then, you know, I think I am gonna sell this in case. Definitely keeping the peak three liter for when I wanna go full frame. Um, definitely keeping the Air City sling for when I kinda wanna do some vlogging or maybe do a two lens setup. And then I'm definitely also keeping this new Bellroy Mini. Kinda really love this thing uh, for when I wanna travel as light as possible with just that one lens, one camera setup. So that's pretty much it. I know. A lot of this stuff really comes down to personal preference and like the gear you have and how you like to carry. But I hope you found the overview useful. Let me know in the comments if there's some other sling bags that you're using. I'm always on the lookout for new sling bags, even though I have committed that I'm gonna sell some of these. And yeah, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.